Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. On today's video, we're gonna be working on a full color along in Geomorphia. This is my second video in the really fun event that has been hosted by Shannon over at Color and Craft with Shani Blue. This is the two weeks with Kirby event and um, we're gonna be doing, like I said, a full color along in Geomorphia. I have um, picked out this gorgeous page. Um, and I think if my calendar is correct and my memory is correct, today's Earth Day. Uh, so I thought that this would be kind of an appropriate, since it's, you know, geomorphia and Earth and all the, all the stuff. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to start, like I usually do with my Kirby pages, we're going to start on the background. Um, one of my favorite things about this book that I did not think about until just recently is that these are single-sided pages. You could absolutely use your alcohol markers on these pages and make the make it just go so much faster. Um, I'm not going to be doing that today, of course, but <laughs> but you could if you wanted to. Um, so this is the page that I picked, and then these are my inspiration images. So I'm excited to try out some things. I don't think I'm going to go quite as dark black as this one is, um, but I do want the giraffes to be colorful. I want the trees and the like clouds in the background to be tr to be colorful. Uh, and then I do want a little bit of a darker sky so that this stuff kind of stands out against the background, but I don't think it's gonna be quite black. I think it's probably gonna be more like this bluey color and maybe like the corners will be black. It's still a, still a work in progress in my head. Uh, but how perfect is this image? Like there's even like little flying creatures and this has little flying creatures. I just, just, it was like, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna try to replicate that as best we can. I'm going to start first with, with my Neo Colors. I do use Neo Colors quite a bit in Kirby books. I love them. I, it just helps me get large sections of the page done very quickly. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to start with, let's do this dark blue color, this, these couple of turquoisey colors. So what is this? I've got um, Prussian blue, I've got cobalt blue, and malachite green. So those are kind of the colors that I'm thinking about. I'm going to probably throw in some turquoise there too. And then some black. I think that will be our colors that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to start with the black because I know I just want a little bit in the corner. So I'm just going to kind of add just a little here and I'm not pressing hard, but just kind of scribbling all of that in. Um, again, well, maybe we'll extend it into the page just a little bit. So we'll just have like a, a darker border around the edge. Uh, so this background is going to be done in two parts. So we're going to do a neo color, and then we're going to um, give it even a little bit more vibrancy with some chalk pastels. Now I learned this technique from Olivia Odorant over. She's got a beautiful YouTube channel, Patreon account. Um, I will try to remember to link her stuff in the description below. Um, she's an amazingly talented artist, and um, I learned this little trick from her, and I, I've used it a few times, and I really like the effect that it gives. Um, it's an extra step, but it really, like I said, it punches up the vibrancy so much. Okay, so now we're going to try... Um, you know what? I lied. We're going to do... <laughs> I'm going to extend this black, but I'm just very lightly very lightly touching the page. But I want this black to mix in with the Prussian blue. I want it to help darken that up a little bit. And I think this is probably a good way to do that. Now, if I had the whole set of Neo colors, I might be able to go through and, um, you know, have the perfect color for this. But since I don't, I'm just going to try to mix some colors together and see how it goes. Uh, and then, you know, just do my best, do my best. Okay, so like I said, very lightly for that little extra, and then we're going to go on <clears throat> with our blue. So now, and you do kind of, you can overlap your colors a little bit. Um, so for example, when I get into this darker black, I just lighten up my pressure on the blue. It's kind of like the same thing that you would do with your pencils, you know, when you are blending things, you just kind of fade off into the other color. Okay, 
So getting around these animals is going to be a little tricky, I think. But I could also come in with a paint pen if I really mess it up too bad. So it's I'm not overly worried about it. Um, but yeah. Trying not to completely ruin the trees. I know I'm going to have to make sure. I'm going to have to be aware when I'm activating this to kind of go in the right direction so that I'm not bringing the color back into the trees. Like I'll be able to push that the color that I get. So for example, here I've gone over the edges a little bit um, and I don't necessarily want that to be blue right now. Um, so I can kind of mess with it when I go to activate the things because I can use my water brush and push the color away from where I want it. That will make way more sense when we actually go to do it. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Okay, I want a lot of this color, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, and then as always, getting in between all of these little pieces is gonna be a nightmare, but I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of color in between all of the larger, like in the larger sections, and fingers crossed that it's actually kind of works. And I'm just going straight over the top of these, um, vines and stuff, these connecting vines. I'm not worried about that right now. I'll worry about that after. Again, if I want to like make it lighter, I can come back in with a paint pen and then um, go from there. Okay. Uh, let's get a little bit of blue down here. Okay. Then we're going to come in. I'm going to do a little bit of the malachite green over top of where the blue was. bit of blue underneath this part. I don't want that malachite green all on its own because it's very, it's a very, um, it's more green than I think people realize. Okay, so now I'm going to use the cobalt blue and we're going to just color in pretty much all the way into the giraffes, especially around here. And then we'll use that last color, which is that Turquoise, I think, is what it is. We'll use that down in the down in this part closest to the giraffe. To the horizon line, I guess, would be the right. Okay. Alright, so hot mess central right now. <laughs> but hopefully, as I blend things together, it'll look better. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, speed this up. Um, I did want to say something though. Um, Emma Colors, who streamed last or had a premiere last week, brought up a really good point that um, just because I get this done in the hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever that you're watching, does not mean that that's actually how long it takes me. Especially when I have things that I've, you know, where I've showed you like one piece of th something that I do, and then I go to where it's completed. Just keep that in mind. Like, don't let yourself get down on yourself if you feel like you're a slow colorist. Um, everybody colors at their own speed. Everybody, you know, does their own thing. And, and yeah, that's all. That's really it. <laughs> I just wanted, I just, I just didn't want anybody to, um, I don't know, come away feeling less than or upset with their own skills or anything like that. Like this is, I'm, I'm here to try to be a positive, um, Influence? No, positive. Just a positive source, really. Yeah, that's, I guess that's it. Anyway, I'm going to speed this up. <laughs> and then um, when we come back, it, it'll all look gorgeous, of course. All right, I'll talk to you in here in a second.
Okay, so this is what it looks like after the first layer and it looks real bad. <laughs> you can see like every brush stroke, everything. There's not enough color difference. It's not what I envisioned at all, but we're gonna try to fix it. So to start, and I have not worked on this paper yet, so I was not, I just assumed that it would be good for my Neo colors. Um, I'm not loving it so far. So we're gonna, did I use brown? No, I used black. <laughs> It was like, did I use brown on that? No. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to just pick it up straight from my um, stick here and see what happens when I do that. Because I know that this black is never as um, dark as I want it to be, but that I'm not super worried about it because I know that I can get really dark um, payout from the um, chalk pastels that I'm going to use here in a minute. But I want it to have a little bit better of a base <laughs> to start with. So we're going to try again to just add some color in here. I mean, we'll see how that dries, but I feel like that already looks a little bit better. Yeah, that was not, <laughs> that was not dark at all. Okay, so that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go around anywhere where there's black. I'm going to grab some color off the, um, the Neo color itself. And you're going to swirl and then you're going to pat until the um, brush runs clear of color. You don't want to just do like straight lines. You want to try to wiggle it around and not wiggle, but like use circular motions a little bit and then make sure you have enough water flowing through your brush so that it does kind of dissolve and blend and all the stuff that you would want it to do. Okay, I'm just gonna finish up this little bit and I will talk to you again here in a second. Okay, next color. And it's still, like, it's still drying very weird over here. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. We're going to go ahead and add in the um, Prussian blue, right? That's what this one is, yeah. Um, I'm gonna start so it overlaps the black a little bit and then bring it into where the blue is. And this is just gonna be me patting the color in um, so it blends a little bit better. I need to be careful. Well, I don't really have to be careful because this is single sided, so I can bleed through the paper if I want to. Um, I was going to say normally if it's double sided paper, you don't want to go over the same spot too many times when it's wet because it will start to bleed through. But on this case, do whatever you want. <laughs> Go over the same space to your heart's content. Yeah, I really don't like that black. I don't like the way that it looks. It's too warm. It's too got too much brown in it, I think. That's the problem. Uh, I was looking definitely for something in a more solid type of black. Um, and I think that once I, I'm pretty sure once I add the chalk pastel, it'll, it'll fix itself, but I always, always second guess what I've done until I get towards the end, so. Okay. So yeah, I'm just kind of patting the color around, trying not to make too much of a mess on the things that are already on here. going right over top of things that are not supposed to be that color. Adding the blue, this blue kind of does help with that black though in the background. I'm just going to pat it right over, right over top.
I'm not going to worry about going between the, the trees again, though. I'm going to do that with um, pencil later on. Okay, this doesn't have to look perfect because I am going to come in with the chalk pastels. So I'm just, just trying to get a better blend between the two before I... The Fragile World paper is really the only paper where I found it's just like perfect the first time with my Neo Colors. I do like to use um, Neo Colors and Ink Tents in the Rita Berman books too. I found those ones are really nice. But um, so far I've always have to add in another layer. Always. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and go. I'm gonna go with the Malachite Green next because I didn't really I don't really see that represented at all on here. So we'll just try to see if we can pounce things around here and make it look a little bit more blended. Yeah, but that's basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these few colors, these last few colors that I used on um, the original layer and just try to cover up those. That's what the pouncing does really. It just kind of creates like a texture so that you're not as drawn to like the streaks of um, neo color. And again, that's why I like to use water brushes for this because then I can beat them up and pounce them and it's not too much of a hassle to replace them. Okay, I'm use the cobalt blue. All right, I'm not gonna use that last color because it looks all right down there. Okay, so let me grab, I've got some cotton pads here. Boy, that looks bad <laughs> around the outside. I don't know how it looks on camera for you guys, but it's really, it's very, a very brownish gray and it does not, it's just not dark at all. Okay, so I'm using the Mungu pastels. I'm gonna use, um, just this, I think it's a black, it's either a black or a super dark gray, but I'm just going to go straight in with the black. Um, and I'm going to use my cotton pad here. So I'm going to, I fold it in half and then fold it again. And that way I have a nice little corner that I can pick up the color with and then get it down on the paper. Oh, I should probably let that dry first. I'm going to let that dry first and then we'll come in and put some chalk pastel down. So I'll talk to you again here in a second. All right, definitely nice and dry. So I'm just gonna go ahead in with the chalk pastel now. And this is gonna get messy, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna use another piece of paper here just to try to contain it as best as I can. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go in with the black right over where the black is from the Neo Colors. You can already see how much, just how much darker that is. The, the Neo Colors give um, the chalk pastel like that base, that nice base layer to grab onto, and it just helps so much. Um, because normally, like if you put chalk pastels down, it, it's also going to be just kind of a little gray and not quite as dark as you would like. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going around the edge with this black, and then I'm probably gonna come in with a couple blues and try to do some stuff on the inside too, but I, I wanna do, I wanna make sure that I get this black down because I want that nice and dark. So I will talk to you guys again here in a second. <laughs> looks better. I'm going to grab a blue from my set. Here, I'm just going to put this over here so you guys can see. We're going to start with the lighter color first. So I'm going to use this light turquoise color that I have, and I'm going to add a little bit 
just a little bit in here just to kind of reinforce that lighter turquoisey color. Okay, and then we're gonna go a little bit darker. And this will probably, I probably will end up spraying this and setting it in place just so that I can um, make sure not to smear the chalk pastel everywhere once I get this kind of down on the page. Okay, let's go a little darker now. We're going to go to this blue. And, you know, don't forget that you can come back in and erase where, like, if you get chalk pastel where you don't want it, you can erase things. So that's why I'm kind of just kind of going over trees wherever I feel like it. Okay. We're going to switch to that darkest blue. We're gonna go with this one. I'm gonna start in like the blue area and then work my way out into the black. I love using these chalk pastels. It just makes it so much faster and easier. Okay, and I am gonna add just a little bit of this really, really dark blue um, over top of the black just so that it kind of blends a little bit better. Okay. All right. That is definitely more of what I had in mind. So let me get myself cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to erase, um, the areas where I have too much um, chalk pastel in the way and I will be right back with you okay so there is the background and the top we're going to work on the background and the bottom I'm going to do the same kind of thing actually because um, I really would like to have like this beautiful just one color faded into another kind of um, look and I know these aren't trees but I'm going to kind of use that same color palette there so I've grabbed a few of my um, neo colors. So I have, let's see, what do I have here? I have orangish yellow, salmon, um, purple, malachite green, and cobalt blue. So I'm just going to try to pick a few places where I definitely want like the, the um, lightest orangey yellow to be. And then we'll kind of blend in some places here and there. We'll have it blend from one color to the next so that um, I kind of get that look that I'm going for. And again, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use the um, Neo colors as a base layer and then we'll come in with our chalk pastels and try to add in some fun um, colors from that. So basically I just, I went through and picked the places that I wanted that orangey color to be. And then I, from there, I'm going to be blending in into the peach or salmon, I guess. And then into the, the, um, this pinky purple color that I have here. There's a weird like line there on the edge of the page. I don't love that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of blend things around, do a little bit of this color over here. I want, I think more of this like pinky color up towards the, the top parts and have some of the blues down at the bottom. So we'll see if I can get managed to, to do that. Okay. That works and then we'll grab I'm gonna go to the blue so I've got this cobalt blue color I'm 
There is a hidden baseball there, but I'm just going to completely ignore it. I don't really want to mess with that right now. Okay, and then I'm going to use the Malachite Green. Um, let me add a little bit of the green there. And I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to grab one more color. I do want to add some green in here, too, because I think, like, the, the shrubs and stuff on the... Um, I'm just going to add this grass green. Um, some of the shrubs and stuff on the rocks that are floating around. I kind of want to have a um, green a shrubbery, I guess. So we'll just, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so got my water brush here. Let me get that prepped and we will get the Neo Colors activated. Okay. All right, I'm going to start in the lightest area and work towards the darker areas. And this does not have to be perfect because, like I said, I'm going to be coming in with chalk pastels. And then I'll probably on top of that even, I'll be coming in with some... Um, pencil work over top just to make sure that it has a good amount of shading and all that stuff. I'm just constantly trying to make sure this water brush has been a little wonky since I stopped, started using it and I'm not sure what exactly is going on but I'm having to uh, make sure that my water is running well. I don't want to mix the orange and blue too much. It's okay to mix that pink and purple because it, um, you know, will create a nice pinky purple color, but mixing the oranges and blues will give you brown, and that's not what I'm looking for. So you just have to think about how much you mix kind of your colors together. Or which direction. That's why I always say start in the lighter and go towards the darker. Okay. I think this is going to be good. I don't think I cleaned off my brush enough on that one. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. All right, I'm going to finish up doing this, and I will talk to you guys here again in a second. All right, one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a base layer of this yellowy orange color to the giraffes. Um, Cause then I'll come in with my pencils and kind of um, color over top in the areas. But I think I want the base layer of the giraffe to be like this color. I am gonna add it to the trees a little bit probably will be doing a different kind of tree than what you would normally see. I don't know that I'm going to do brown. Um, brown bark there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I want, I want this orange color on the sides of the giraffes here. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just gonna, this is just like a base layer so I can work off the top of, or on top of this for my, um, shading and stuff when I come in here for the, with my pencils. Because I want colorful giraffes to match my colorful background, I think. So I noticed that the lighter colors tend to blend a little bit better, but maybe that's, I don't know not as noticeable like the weird all the weird lines and stuff aren't as noticeable on the lighter colors I think <laughs> maybe it's just in my head here but it's kind of what it seems like anyway all right so once I get this all um Done here we'll start working with some chalk pastels on the cloud area behind the giraffes and then I will go and seal all of that and then we'll start working on some pencil work yeah. okay I like that base let's grab my chalk pastels and make another mess 
Okay, so I've got, let's see, I'm going to get my swatch chart just so I can see kind of what the colors look like. Um, and of course, I don't have anything, you can't really number things in this. <laughs> it's just kind of in the order. So I think that I like for like the yellowy orange stuff, I really do like this peach. Um, yeah, so I'm going to grab some of this peach. I'm also going to grab this neon orange. Those are going to be a couple colors that I use. Uh, we're going to use this neon pink and this like fuchsia color. Um, and then of course we'll use the turquoisey, turquoisey bits, a little bit of this green here. And this one, this one. Okay, so let's see how we do. So I'm gonna grab the peach color first. Let's see if this is what I was wanting. Um, I mean, it's all right. It's not, do I want this neon orange? Ooh, I kind of like that. I do want that to have a little bit more yellow though. So I'm gonna grab a yellow right in those lightest areas. I will probably have to come in here again with a um, eraser, but that's okay. All right, so done with those colors. Let's do some pink. I'm gonna grab this neon pink first. And that's just going to go on the areas where the, the orange and the pink color that I used kind of blend together. I don't know if you'll really be able to see the difference, but I can already see how much nicer that looks. Just in those few colors that we used. Okay, let's do, I'm going to keep it on that one actually and just use this darker purpley pink. Again, this is just going in the areas where I want this like dark. It's just kind of helping to blend the colors together a little bit more inst instead of having like harsh transitions or anything like that. All right, done with my pinks. Let's work to the blues. Um, let's do the green first. We're going to do the green first. So I only have green in a couple spots, but I wanted to I wanted a little bit of green in here just to tie it in with like the The shrubbery, like I said. Shrubbery. Every time I say that, it makes me think of um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Bring us a shrubbery. <laughs> I love that. I love that movie. Okay. I'm trying to avoid going into the orange too much because I don't want... definitely don't want it to be um, brown. Okay, and then just a little bit more, just a little bit. With this darker one. Yeah, and then like I said, I'm going to go off screen and spray this with some fixable adhesive. I just use Krylon Workable Fixative. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll work with some pencils on this page. I think it's really, it's looking pretty cool so far. So I'm excited to see how this, this goes. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I've got that all sealed. So now, see, I can rub it on my, or my fingers on it and it doesn't pick it up too bad. Um, there might still be a couple spots where I missed because I just did a really light <laughs> coat quickly so that I could get this done for you guys. But um, yeah, so now I'm going to use a couple of markers. I'm going to use a water-based marker and an alcohol marker um, since this is single-sided and I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to use this water-based marker on all of the shrubs and I'm just, just using the end of the brush to add in a little bit of color here and there. I'm not gonna do it on the um, treetops yet. Cause I quite, haven't quite decided if I wanna do all of the, um, 
all of the trees in green or if I want to do them you know with a couple of the other colors from down here uh, and well and you'll I don't know if you'll be able to see it so far away um, on a couple of the bushes I didn't really get super close like I didn't fill up the whole thing so I can come in with some pencils I might add a little bit here and there so yeah I'm just gonna add a few little spots of green to the trees here and just kind of have the trees reflect the um, beautiful colors down here all right so um, actually let me just grab another I'm gonna grab a couple more markers and all right, so I'm just going to, on this, I'm just gonna touch it a couple of places. This is, this dark green is gonna be in the darker areas for sure on the shrubs here. Um, and then when I come in with my pencil, I'll do a little bit of blending out and stuff, but this is just to kind of give me an idea. I do wanna grab a, like a yellowy orange color too. All right. So I'm going to use the lightest pink on the Zig Brushables. Just add in a few spots. This is kind of what I did in the other video as well, where I just kind of um, placed color quickly wherever I felt like I needed it. I'm going to add a little bit of pink to this one. A little bit of pink to this one. I forgot to add turquoise to these guys. the pink okay and then we're gonna do probably should add this turquoise into a couple spots on the tree I'll put it in like the darker shaded areas for sure so all of the little bits and pieces underneath and this this turquoise color I should be able to find a nice in between color for that to blend into. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add a little pink on the, these ones. Then we're gonna do some of this yellowy orange color around. And again, this is one of those things where it's gonna look like a hot mess until, <laughs> until it's done. Um, so try not to judge it too harshly. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna use that other orange that I grabbed. We're just gonna leave it there, and then when I get my pencils, I'll be able to blend all that together. All right, and then for the rock formations, I'm gonna use this nice, cool gray. Uh, I'm just gonna color the whole thing in, I think. Maybe we'll just leave some of the like highlighted areas towards the center. So like it's catching some light there. Definitely a nice thing about having the single sided because these alcohol markers are so quick and easy. They just fly across the page. Let's see where we're at. I think this is looking okay. I think, I think. All right, we're gonna see if that works. Hopefully, I will remember to stay on screen. I'm just using the um, Cold Gray 5 to add in some darker shadows around the rock formations. And anywhere where I've left it kind of open, I'm gonna probably be adding some color in. I probably just went right off the page, <laughs> right off the screen. Uh, I'm gonna be adding in some color, I think, to the rocks as well, instead of just leaving them just gray. Since everything else is gonna be really colorful, I just, I don't know, I just thought that kind of worked. So, yeah, just making sure to get nice shadows underneath the shrubs that are up here on top. Um, so let's go back to this one. So I'm just going to kind of show you what, it, what my plan is, and then I'll go through and do all of the rocks just to get them kind of done and out of the way. Uh, I did grab my cold gray one as well. I'm going to add just a little bit of that into here in a couple of places. Okay, so now I'm going to grab, um, we're going to use a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to do a little bit of yellow right on the edge here. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of, oh, so that was light chrome yellow. This is um, middle purple pink. I don't know if that's the same name that it is now, but it's 125. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that in. And it's not gonna be everywhere. It's just like a, a hint of color on the rocks. Uh, and then cobalt turquoise. It's gonna be a little bit there too. Oh, I need to grab a green. Add a little bit of shading. Just kind of blending things from one to the other. Again, using my pencils, switching back and forth between pencils to add in different colors here and there. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of this, um, what is this one? Dark chrome yellow. And then I'm gonna use the cobalt turquoise to blend out that turquoise color a little bit. Okay, and then I also have light green, this tiny little baby, baby pencil. All right, that is kind of what I'm thinking for the rocks. Let's do one more together, just so you can kind of see my thought process. Again, I went through and did the shading with my dark gray. I'm gonna blend that out just a little bit in a couple of spots with the cold gray one. So like right here, there's a harsh line and I don't really want any harsh lines. So I'm very lightly just gonna take my pencil and fix that there. Okay, now we're gonna add in some colors. So I'm gonna do the yellow. I'm gonna stick with those colors that I used previously. Um, so I've got the yellow and the um, light chrome yellow, middle purple pink, and the cobalt turquoise are the ones I'm gonna to use to add a little bit of color. And I'm gonna do lighter kind of on this side. Just add in a few spots and then we'll add in some pink colors. And then some turquoise. And some of these rocks, since they're already kind of tinted, um, tinted blue from, from the background, just kind of adds a little bit to it. All right, let's get these, um, these little shrubs done. I'm gonna start with this light green. Just kind of go over the whole thing. Add in this pink here. And then we'll use the cobalt turquoise and we're just gonna kind of I'm gonna try to stay in the shadows as much as I can with that color. I know it's not quite the same as it should be, but we're gonna try that. Okay, so that's kind of my thought process and I'm hoping that as I go through, the rest of it kind of falls into place. I might need my black to make the, um, the shadows really dark there are a couple spots specifically like right under the shrubbery and like where you can definitely tell where like pieces of rock are jutting out that I want to make sure that it's extra super dark okay yeah I like that a little better so you can see I'm going to be using all of these pencils <laughs> as we go through um, I'm going to go through and do the floating island bits first and then um, we'll come back and start working on the clouds I think. So I will talk to you again here in a second. So I got the got all the little 
guys done. I'll probably go back in and add some um, paint pen later on, but right now I want to start shading on the clouds here. So I have a plethora of pencils here. Uh, I am going to use the appropriate color depending on which area I'm in to shade. So for like these lighter orangey yellow bits, I'm going to use this color and hopefully um, this will this will work because I am not exactly 100% sure about what I'm wanting to do here. Um, but I know like in the, like the darker areas, I know that it's not going to be quite dark enough. So I'm going to have to come in with like a gray or browns, depending on, um, what the situation calls for. Okay. So let me go over the colors I have here for you. Just so you, just so you know what I've got. So I've got light chrome. I have dark chrome yellow. I have medium flush, which I think is now coral, maybe. Um, you can tell I've got some of the newer pencils and some of the really, like this is from my first set, these ones with the different font. Um, and then I have middle purple pink. I have the light green. I have phthalo green. I have cobalt turquoise and I have Prussian blue. So those are all of the pencils that I'm gonna be switching between depending on what what I'm looking for and what I'm needing. So like for these, these green areas, I'm gonna use the phthalo green for the darker bits and then try to blend it a little bit with the light green and hope that I get the same um, look as I did with like the shrubs in the on the little floating islands. That's my game plan at least because I do want some of these areas to look more green. I want them to look you know, just kind of all over the place. But like in this area here, I know that I want a little bit of green here, but this is mostly like turquoise. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this green right on the edges of some of these parts. Okay. All right, let me get, I'm going to use, so I'm just going to go through and, and color this and I'll probably, let's, let's chat a little bit. We'll do that. Um, I'm not going to be doing a weekend whip this weekend, so um, we we can chat a little bit while I while I do this, and then um, yeah, okay. Let me sorry, <laughs> focusing on this now. So I'm going to use this medium flesh color, which I hate that I don't like that name. I think it's just it's just coral, right? I'm pretty sure that's the that's the name for it. But it's kind of like this in between. It's like more for that peachy pink kind of area um, until it starts getting into more of the, the pink, which is what I'll be using this middle purple pink color for, for the shading really. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the um, streams this week. I think it's been, it's been awesome. I wish I would have been able to join in a lot more. I have been popping in where I can giving thumbs up where I can. Um, but I have not been able to been on quite as much as I, as I had hoped. Um, I'm hoping to just kind of be able to stream all day on Saturday after my, before and after my premiere. And of course, off the top of my head, I, I don't know the schedule, but I will definitely know um, day of and, and be able to, you know, um, send you guys in the right, right direction once my stream is over. Um, it's really fun just kind of hopping from, from one to the next and, um, you know, seeing how different people attach or attack, attach, attack different projects has been, um, it's been interesting just to see how everybody kind of uses their, their Kirby um, books. Yeah, specifically in these, these darker yellow areas, I kind of want a little bit more highlight, but maybe I'll come in with a white. Maybe the white will really help. And I can just kind of focus on just getting a nice color variation from one section to the next. Okay. Um, let's move over here. Um, 
let's see. So Friday, I am going to, so I'm recording this early. So I will have already gone when you guys are chatting with me, but I figure I could talk about it a little bit now. We are, my friend and I, uh, it's her birthday, my, my lovely friend Amy, who has been my friend since my son was four years old. Um, she's really my best buddy and I love it when she's here and I love that we can go and do things and, and have, I mean, my husband and I aren't, aren't really going out people. So any of the fun <laughs> that I've had, like where I've gone out to bars or I've gone out dancing or I've got, you know, all these, you know, done like fun grown up things, um, has been with Amy. So I'm just really thankful that I get to spend her birthday with her. Uh, we are going to go to this really cool art exhibit that is, um, it's like Monet's art has like come to life. So it's, I'll hopefully, um, I'll remember to share some pictures or something on like social media with you guys. But, um, yeah, super excited for that. I'm going to get dressed up and look pretty. We're going to go have breakfast. We're going to go see this cool art thing. And then I'm going to have to turn back into mom mode because then I'll have to go pick up my kiddo. But, um, yeah, super excited for that. I have been reading, of course. I have been reading. When am I not reading? Um, and I found a couple fun, just cute little, like, romance. They're, like, small-town romance books. They're, they're really cute. Um, I liked... Um, it's, I can't remember. I'm so bad with like remembering names and remembering titles of books. I'm just terrible about that. But I will try to remember maybe to put it on screen, but it's, it's like this, it's this, these three sisters and they, their grandmother passes away and they inherit this, um, house that she has claimed in her will that she wants to go as a bed and breakfast. So, um, and then things ensue from there. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read the next in that series. I just read the first one and it's not, you know, some of the books that I read tend to be a little spicier. Um, and this one is not, it's just a sweet romantic comedy and I really liked it. So, um, it was a nice change of pace. <clears throat> All right. I like that little that little grouping. Definitely going to come back in with paint pens though. That's going to be, that's going to be the key, I think. All right, let me, I probably don't need this color anymore, so we'll just use this now. Um, what else has happened? Gosh, not a, not a ton else. Really just like everyday, you know, normal everyday life stuff. I did kind of start exercising. Well, I've been, I've been trying to start exercising. I've been trying to eat a little bit better. Um, so this week I've really, it's like been a, a focus for me, which is not normal for me. Normally I'm, you know, I'm all about doing what I don't, you know, what I should probably not be doing is just like reading or I don't know, avoiding everything else. And um, this week I've actually, I've gotten up every day and while my kiddo is getting ready for school, I have been exercising. Now, granted, it's just like stuff in the house, <laughs> you know, but um, it's still, I'm moving. That's that's the thing. That's the, the big key. All right, let me get through some of this and we'll move into like the turquoisey areas and you guys can see how I'm gonna work on that. And then I'm just gonna kind of, I think I'm gonna fast forward some of it and then you can see some of how I do it, but the rest of it's just gonna kind of be done. Um, Cause I know that if I if I don't get to the giraffes, it's I'm not gonna be within my, my two hour time limit. And I really wanna make sure that, that you guys get to see the majority of the page come together. Um, Oh, I did release a video this week. If you guys are interested, I had a, a new coloring book come out that I was unbelievably excited for. If you have watched any of my live streams, you might have heard me talk about um, Critical Role before, which is a D&D, &D, a Dungeons and Dragons um, 
stream and I have been watching it since like the beginning and they've like exploded basically. They had um, like the biggest um, crowdfunding campaign for a, an animated series or something like that. It was like some kind of record was set, but um, they now have animated series and animated series on Amazon Prime, which is very adult. So if you're not into adult kind of um, comedy with your animation, I would avoid that one because it's, like I said, very adult, but it's really funny and it's all based on their D&D stream. So I know like a lot of what's going to happen but it's really been cool to see how they've changed it up to, um, you know, just still kind of give you some surprises here and there. Anyway, they had a coloring book come out and it's all based on their first campaign. And I love every single page in the book and it's a nice coloring book. There's, it's lovely paper. The artwork is gorgeous. Um, and I did share a flip through of that on my channel. So even if you are not into Dungeons and Dragons. It's still, it's just a beautiful book. Um, so yeah, I'm super, super excited to color in that one. I really can't wait. Um, yeah, very excited about that. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow in the areas where I know that I want more yellow. I'm going to do a little bit of this orangey color. I hope this is looking pretty cool. I think it is. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Like I'll look at something and I'm like, yeah, that looks great. And then I'll look at it later. I'm like, no, 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 it did not look great. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but I think we're all kind of like that, really. All right. Okay, so that's that's going to be kind of how that's going to go. Let's work. I'm going to work on this little like purple to turquoise area here. Um, I'm going to use the cobalt turquoise to add in the darker bits on anywhere where there's blues for sure I might need a little bit yeah I'm gonna grab of course I'm gonna grab more pencils because I need to have more pencils in my hand <laughs> grab my um well I think I'm missing a pencil which is unfortunate uh, I'm going to use this light phthalo blue in some of the lighter areas. No, that didn't really do what I wanted it either. So we're just going to not worry about it. Uh, I'll come in with a um, paint pen and try to give that con get that contrast back in there. I don't know where my white Posca or my white um, Prismacolor is because I could just kind of use that. But Oh, I have the white polychromo, so maybe that'll help. Yeah, it helps a little. I just wanted it to be a little bit lighter in certain areas on these clouds, and I just, I know that my, my Prismacolor would do the right thing. Okay, so this is, like I said, just going through and adding shadows into the darker bits. So I have that cobalt turquoise that I was just using. Um, add that in there. And then I'm gonna use the Prussian blue in like the really dark areas. just a few of them and then when it goes from like the blue into the pink I'm going to use the Prussian blue as the shading and then use the pink as the like blending the blender part because I didn't want to I didn't grab a purple so we can just kind of add a few bits and pieces and it should kind of blend together to look more like a purple once I go over top Maybe. <laughs> Again, this is a lot of guesswork because I'm just f flying by the seat of my pants here. I really didn't have a clear idea of what I wanted to do until I started doing it. Like I knew, I, I take that back. Okay, I knew that I wanted like that look from the inspiration images, but I didn't really know how to go about getting to that point, I guess is really what I'm saying. So just kind of trying things out to see what works and uh, going from there. I 
Yeah, I wish I had a lighter, a little bit lighter um, color in there, but it's okay. All right. Okay, so yep, I'm going to go through and just keep coloring the rest of this, all these clouds bits, and then we'll come back and we'll work on the giraffes together. But I'm going to speed this up for a little bit, and then I will um, uh, see you guys when this is all done. Okay, so here is where we are. I've got all of the shading done on the bottom part um, and then the shading on the islands, I guess, for lack of better. I guess they're, they're like floating islands, right? Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit. I need to try to clean that up a little bit more if I can. I don't think I can. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of pink and turquoise, maybe some yellow, to these clouds here. Uh, I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of turquoise in like the really darkest areas. It's gonna look similar to like the clouds behind it, but it's gonna be a little bit more white in it on this, this part. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in some pink. I wanted these clouds to stand out just a little bit from the background. I don't want it to be like super stark difference, but different enough that you know that it's kind of broken off from that background. It's not quite part of it anymore. All right, and then just a little bit of yellow. Okay, and then I'm gonna try to use this white I still haven't found <laughs> my Prisma White, but this will work in a pinch. All right, and just darken up a couple of spots here. I know for sure that I will be able to add like white Posca at the end of this, and then it'll it'll look a lot better. Because right now it just kind of looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? <laughs> little bit. All right, let's do the same thing with this one. Okay. All right, I think it's looking pretty cool so far. Let's work on a giraffe. I am not quite sure how I want to do this. So there's two different ways that I have on here. So with this one where there's like the black worked into the spots, but I don't know how I'm, I kind of like it where it's like like multicolored across the giraffe. I kind of like this one a little bit more. Um, and I think that I'm gonna go that direction. Uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna do on the face. I kind of like the like the orangish part of the face more. Let's, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom you back in just so you're kind of focused on one giraffe. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. So um, we'll probably we may not record all of that, but um, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna zoom you in. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the neck first. Uh, I know that I want, like, so I have that orange color over here. I want this side to be like pink and turquoisey kind of. I think that's what I want on both of them. So this side is gonna be more orange and this side is gonna be more pink and turquoisey on the necks. Um, so let me grab a few of those pencils out. That's what I need there. I'll we'll just get started. So I'm gonna start with the orange. And since there's already like shading and stuff in here, I think that it will kind of just blend pretty well. Um, I don't need to really add any, like a ton of shading on top of it. Uh, I just, I want the orange to kind of go part way across the the giraffe and then like the face spots are going to be kind of the same thing where I'm just kind of 
There's a few spots that have orange. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use this pink. I'm gonna get a, another pink so that I can have another pink kind of in, as an in-between. We're gonna use this one. I think this is, yeah, so this is Pink Matter Lake. Um, and it's really tiny, so I'm gonna have to hold it, hold it weird because I don't have any pencil extenders down here right now either. Um, but it's just gonna be my transition color between this darker purpley pink and the orange that I have on here. So yeah, that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna kind of get these spots colored in. Um, and some places I'll have them be two-tone, other places will just be like one solid color. I might actually add a little bit of the yellow to plot the spots on the, on the giraffe there too. All right, let's get these last little couple of spaces here. And I like polychromos because you can build up with the layers and it just keeps getting more and more pigment, more and more color. So this is a little brighter than I was anticipating it being, but I don't mind it, really. Really don't. I think it's gonna be cool looking. Okay, and then we're gonna have this pinky purple color is gonna be like a couple of like full, oh, these ones up around the neck are gonna be kind of more mixed. And we'll just get a few more of these colored in. So I'm just using the pink, that lighter pink color I have as just a little bit of a blending. I want to add another layer of kind of that pink tone, but maybe just a little bit, or the pink color, but maybe just a little bit different tone. And come back in with the darker pink again. So it's not just like a solid block of pink that there's actually two two kind of colors that are blending together here. Get a little orange in here. Okay, I like that. I get a couple of spots on the face here. All right, we're gonna switch to, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the turquoise. So this is this is cobalt turquoise. I'm just gonna pick a couple of spots to blend those colors together a little bit. Now they're not gonna blend perfectly because you know those two colors don't necessarily blend all the way together, but um, that's okay. And then I'll be adding in like the Prussian blue with this one too, so. I'm just doing a light layer first, and then we'll do like full, get all the, the blending and the shading and everything kind of in here. And even though I have like that orange color down um, on the page from where I was, you know, from where I used my Neo colors, it's not that, it's not that big of a, um, Deal. like it doesn't affect the top the, the layers that I'm putting over top very much because it's so light which is a bonus okay um, I think for shading on the actual giraffe though I will be bringing in maybe some maybe browns because I want it to look like it's more I mean natural I can't really say that this is natural at all can I <laughs> This really is one of my favorite ways to do pages though too, is to um, find an image that just really, that you just love and try to replicate it the best you can. And it, it makes you think outside the box. It makes you use your supplies in a different way than you would normally just do if you were, you know, just sitting and coloring without really thinking about things. 
that's the part that I really do like about coloring is that you have this creative um, place that you can try out things and you can, you know, you can do things. You can do stuff and things. <laughs> right, I'm going to add a little bit of green into these ones, just a little up here in the corners, just a tiny bit. And then we're going to come in with the um, Prussian blue. This is just a nice deep blue. I am liking the way that this is looking though. I think it's pretty cool looking. Trying to blend all these colors together makes you kind of think about what you need to put down where too. So that's always a, another way that you can just add a little bit of more thought into it. I know a lot of people come in and they're like, I just need some mindless coloring and that's great. If you want to color this without thinking about it, that's totally fine. And if that's how you color, that's totally fine. It's just my, um, my brain <laughs> likes to have a challenge on occasion. Like sometimes I just need the, the mindless coloring. Absolutely. But I like to have these times where I'm like, okay, how can I make this completely cool? Like, what do I need to do to make this look amazing? Well, as amazing as I can make it anyway. Okay. All right. I think, I think I like that. I get these couple of spots up here. This really is just like trying to blend between different colors. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I like that. Let me grab um, something to shade with now. I'm thinking I'm just gonna go with a brown. So let's try that first and we'll see how this goes. So this is just burnt ochre and I'm going to just add it in a couple of spots where Kirby has these hash marks and see if that's um, good enough to give me the contrast I want or if I need to come in, I probably need to come in with another darker color. So I'm just going to use this cold gray that I already have out. And just right along the edges, I'm going to add a little bit of gray. This is also to help separate those clouds from the background too. Or the giraffe from the clouds, I guess I should say. Okay. Alright, I like that. Let me add some of this brown into where these other hash marks are. And I can use my orange to shade, to blend that kind of into the giraffe itself. Oop, I have a tiny little spot there that I need to get. There we go. All right, and then, yeah, like in these really dark areas where he's added extra shading. I'm just going to use my cold gray to add in just a little bit more. Just right over top of the ochre color. Okay. All right, I'm going to try to clean up where I was messy. Like in between the spots here. just it's so messy but it's okay okay I think that's gonna look cool this is turning out to be like a hundred percent like a Lisa Frank <laughs> um giraffe here but I don't mind it I'm okay with that if it brings a smile to 
any Wednesday, I am good with that. Okay, so I'm just going to take my, um, what did I say this was? Burnt ochre. And go over everywhere where Kirby has added in those little hash marks. Okay, I'm going to use the um, dark chrome yellow. So my orangey color to lightly blend outwards from everywhere where I've got the brown. So especially on his face too. And this is just a light, pretty light touch. It's not anything, I'm not pushing hard at all. You can see I'm holding the pencil pretty far back. This is just gonna bring that color out just a little bit more. Okay. Next step, we're gonna use the cold gray again. And in the darkest areas, I'm going to add this color so that it's nice and dark. And anywhere where I think there needs to be a little bit of extra shadow. Usually he's, like I said, he's really good about making sure that you know where the shadows are. But sometimes... It's nice to add in your own shadows here and there. So specifically like around the eye. I'm going to get nice and shadowed in there. And if you mess up, just use your eraser. That's okay. Like this whole area around the eye, I think, should be a little darker, a little deeper. Okay, what do we think of that? Maybe I need to add a little bit more on top of the gray. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink in the corner of his eye there, and we're gonna make his eye blue. But since there's already black on it, it's just gonna be like this turquoise on top of the black. And I just felt like doing something a little different. I just didn't wanna make it black. I messed up and got out of the lines. I just wanted that to be black. And then I'm gonna use the black um, to do the eyelashes, because giraffes have crazy cool eyelashes. Maybe to outline the eye a little bit too. There we go. Get this on that side. Um, yeah, and then I'm just adding the black in like the super dark areas. And maybe just a little bit underneath the, the head here. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty neat. Um, let's do one more thing. And I am going to do this sparingly. And hopefully it doesn't look too crazy. I'm just going to add a little bit of pink. Um to a couple of like the highlight areas. So I'm using this lighter pink that I had and I'm just barely touching the page. Now I can't really hold it super far back <laughs> because it's such a tiny pencil, but I'm just like, just barely running the tip of the pencil over the page there. Just wanna add a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. I don't know why, but I, I felt the need to do that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna work on these trees here. Um, this is gonna be another combination of like the browns and I'm gonna grab one more color. Um, so I am gonna do this kind of, kind of brown, um, but I did have that light orangey color on the, ooh, Goodness, orangey color on the side there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and color this and kind of blend it into the orangey color that I had from my Neo Colors. Same with this. So I'm just gonna keep um, the highlighted areas open for not only like white, but maybe even some yellow thrown in there and some um, evidently blue is going to be in there because it's just on 
It's just on the trees. It's just, it's just gonna happen. We'll just have to accept it and live with it. It'll be fine. Okay, so now I brought in some burnt sienna and I'm going along the right edge of the tree, but then I'm also gonna start bringing some of that color out into the tree because these are such cool trees. I can't remember the name of these. If anybody remembers, put it in the um, in the chat. Let me know. You guys never has. I mean, you guys are you know never um, disappoint when I need like <laughs> information. I'm like, hey, what is this? And you're like, there you go. It's nice to have that. have that connection with all of you helping me learn and grow <laughs> okay and then I'm gonna bring in my chrome yellow dark chrome yellow and I'm just kind of doing that a little bit we're gonna bring in some yellow anywhere where there's like highlighted areas on here we're gonna try to do a little bit of that I feel like I need to have um, a little bit darker brown as well so I'm gonna bring in one more brown uh, and I grabbed walnut brown but I don't want that one I want burnt umber I think no. okay I'm gonna grab I grabbed the, my burnt umber and this is just gonna help me kind of get those even, those super dark areas even darker without bringing in the gray. I don't wanna bring in more gray on the trees. Okay, I'm also going to try my best to kind of create a shadow where those vines would be and reinforce the shadows on the branches. And then one more time, kind of go through with the lighter brown to get all the branches in there. Okay. Um, let's do, so on one of the giraffes, there's some cool swirls of color. So I'm going to bring some swirls of color into the tree too. So I'm, I got a little bit of pink here. I already have that orange and yellow going. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of pink and then a little bit of this, um, turquoise blue color. But since I already have, you know, some blue from, my background I'm just really like really hesitant with this one like very light touch okay all right I like the tree part that looks pretty cool let's work on the um the leaves and stuff at the top so again this is going to be kind of like what I did with the um the shrubs on the floating island so I just used my green I'm going to use this yellow over top of like where I've got the orange and stuff Kind of blending things together as I go. Let's do some pinks. Okay. And then we'll use this cobalt turquoise. And I'm going to make sure that I get all of the parts in between the branches and that are like way in shadow with that cobalt turquoise. There's a spot here that I don't love. I'm just going to color that in. All right, I'm going to come in with the burnt, oop, the burnt umber and right underneath the tops of the trees. I'm going to add in a little bit of this color just to help with 
creating shadows. And again, deepening up the shadows on the side of the tree here. I'm gonna have to have the black in, aren't I? <laughs> just do it, it's just gonna have to happen. Okay, so I'm adding the black to like the really dark shadow areas on the foliage of the tree. Um, definitely under the uh, vines and stuff that are on the tree. And then a few spots where like the limbs kind of overlap. I'll add it in there. And just a tiny bit back here probably. Okay. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go through and do this other um, treetop really quick. Just using the, the yellow that I have out anywhere where I didn't get any color beforehand. And then we'll go to the green and the green spaces. Um, let me do a little bit of this pink before we go into the other pink. probably didn't need to change from one to the other like so drastically on the treetops like on the inspiration image it's more of a like there's whole sections of like huge um, trees that are like all one color and then it switches instead of being so multicolored but I don't mind this I think this looks pretty cool still too okay and then let's get that turquoise color in there. All right, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and do this other tree. I'm gonna speed that up for you guys so you can see it. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the other giraffe off screen and then we'll come back and work with some paint pens a little bit. So I will talk to you again here in a second. All right, so here's where we're at now. I really like the way that this is looking. Um, it's a hundred percent just a straight Lisa Frank <laughs> giraffe page, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Um, so I'm gonna take my black um, pencil and I'm just gonna go through and kind of outline a few of these birds um, just so they don't completely disappear into the, the background. Okay. Um, the other thing I did is I did color in the little flying creatures. I just took one solid color of a pencil and did, so I did these guys pink. I did this one, the green color, this one orange, and this one turquoise. So now I'm going to get out my Posca pens and hopefully they're all going to cooperate today. My white one was giving me some issues earlier, but I'm going to see how it does. Most of this is going to be dots, dots and lines, right? That's what I'm planning sorry I'm getting in my head what I'm what I'm actually going to try to do um yeah so I've got my yellow one here I'm gonna just go through we're gonna start with yellow um and on this orange um little creature I'm gonna do a line along the like the top of it the top of the wings um do the same thing on this guy I think that this should show up if not, I can always just come in with just the white and do it that way. Um, on these pink ones, I'm pretty sure this will show up here too. So I'm just going to do like a line along the top. That might be a little bright. 
Um, this one up here. And then for the green one, I wonder if the yellow will show up on that one. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Now, on the like the little shrubs and stuff, I'm gonna use my yellow, I think. We're gonna attempt to do it this way first. And I'm just gonna come through and do some little dots in like the areas that would be um, kind of highlighted. I don't know if I like, I'm gonna try one with white and see if I like that better. And then we'll go, we'll see. And this um, Posca was leaking on me. This is the first time that's ever happened. And I was very upset. I don't even know if you guys are gonna be able to see that. I don't know if I like the white better or the, huh. Yeah, oh, I probably need to open that a little bit more. There we go, that's a little bit better. I think I like the yellow. A little bit better um, so yeah I'm just gonna keep going with the yellow so I'm just gonna do a few dots along some of the highlighty areas on all of these little shrub bits I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the trees as well so just a few in the like super highlighted bits I know the yellow color kind of goes well with the greens and the orangey colors that I already have on there. I'm gonna go ahead and come in with a couple of pink dots. Try to do some of those on the pink areas of the, the trees here. Try not to get things smeared everywhere because I'm sure that that will happen. I'm very good at smearing my paint pens. <laughs> okay. All right. That looks better. I'm hoping that you guys can see that a little bit and it's not too glary. Um, yeah. And then I'll get these little guys down here. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take my yellow, do a couple of dots. the pink ones on there okay um next I'm going to use the white and just make sure that this is nice and white in here these little oh that was probably too much but that's okay I can fix it if I need to um color this just a little darker all right so now I'm going to take a mixture of these colors and we're gonna do highlights on some of these clouds in the background so for the pink and I'm just gonna randomly just do like a little arc of pink although that didn't show up very well at all did it I think it's only gonna show up on the darker so once I start getting to the lighter I'm gonna have to use the white I think yeah, let me try some of that. And it's just like random, randomly hitting the highlights of different areas. It's not, there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's just like, well, what do I feel like drawing a line on? Okay, there we go. That's going to be the one. Yeah, that's not dark enough. Probably work back here, maybe. That looks nice. And because I have the... Um, workable fixative on here the um, the paint takes a little bit longer to dry so you want to be aware of that when you're no I want that off of there when you are working try to keep your hands out of the paint all right let's see what this one does on these darker yeah that looks okay Mm -mm. Let me get the white on these ones. Need it to actually curve. Try to follow the lines of the shapes that 
Kirby is drawn in. Okay. All right, I am gonna also outline these clouds with my white. All right, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna use, <laughs> not gonna use the colored one, the color um, paint pens down here. So I'm just gonna use white just to randomly highlight things. We got all that. Now I'm gonna take the turquoise color. I'm gonna use this for the, um, the vines that are here. I'm gonna try to stay in the lines as best I can and try not to go over it, but I'm just gonna add on a little bit of color so that it's a little more solid. All right, and then last but not least, I'm gonna take these four colors and I'm gonna do like some stars stuff in the background. So I'm gonna just dot around with these four colors and um, then I think we'll be done. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll talk to you in here in a second. Another little thing. Nope. You know what? I think I'm done. I think that's it. All right. I'm going to, so you can see that it kind of curved up a little bit, but I can come back in and straighten that out pretty well. I don't want to be careful. And I don't mess up the paint pens that I just put on. But yeah, that is, that's the page. Um, I really like it. I think it's it's a fun a fun page. I feel like maybe I need a little bit more shading in a couple of spots, but you know I could play with these pages forever and always find something to tweak and something to you know change a little bit. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna as soon as I do this part I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> as soon as I do this, yeah. So I'm done. So that is it. That is my lovely giraffe page. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Um, make sure that you go check out whoever I say is next. I'm so sorry that I don't know it off the top of my head, but I will definitely know it. It'll be in chat. There'll be a link in chat. Um, so check that out. And, um, yeah, thank you so much to Shannon for putting this together. Thank you to all of the streamers that have done such a wonderful job over the past two weeks and, um, make sure that you check out as many as you can this weekend. All right. Until next time. Thank you all so much for being here. And take care. Bye.